Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. Um, we are continuing on with video number eight of Beguiled Eden to Armageddon. Um, we are on The Sky is Falling. Um, I still have a ton of work to do, so the other videos I'll be making tonight. Um, the Sky is Falling. Um, strange Explosions along with huge fireballs, are being witnessed from Norway to China to the U.S. to the U.S.A. as incoming bolides are consistently hitting Earth's atmosphere and burning up. A huge fireball recorded over the southeast on January 11, 2011, lit up the sky for Americans to see. Another fireball in February 2011 over Italy was star-shaped, and it was even compared to the star of Bethlehem. Near the end of February 2011, a most unusual fireball fell with huge fragments breaking off that was witnessed from Ontario, Canada to the northeast United States. During February 2012, the, the Russian Academy of Sciences Geophysical Service announced two powerful explosions hit western Siberia three days apart with the first one measuring a 3.6 on the Richter scale. Strange noises were heard worldwide beginning in late 2011 that continued to increase during 2012 and right on into 2013. Some of these noises were loud while others were drilling and humming noises. In hundreds of reported cases, no sources have ever, has ever been found for such strange sounds. Professor... Ekin Kaililu, a geophysicist, speculated these sounds were acoustic gravity waves being generated due to Earth's destabilizing magnetosphere. This was due, he believed, to the sun's intense solar activity, which began to escalate in 2011. But it could, have, it could also be a dire warning from Yahuwah. Therefore, prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Adoni shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his Kodesh habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they, they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Adoni hath a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Adonai. Jeremiah 25, 30 through 31. Early in 2010, NASA officials witnessed debris not even identifiable as a standard asteroid. The object named P2010A2 was observed through Hubble's telescope as it orbited in a satellite belt between Mars and Jupiter. What it, what, it was remains, what it was remains a mystery. Technological capability to identify ever-present dangers to our very existence is limited. Even if we recognize Earth as lining up for a major collision, there is very little we can do about it other than try to shoot the meteoroid apart using our so-called Star Wars defense systems. So is there proof something is really about to is there is there proof something is about to really fall from the sky and hit us? Yes, because it is already happening with so many more bolides penetrating Earth's atmosphere. On top of, of this, our military has always released data to scientists about Bola dies, um, but since 2009, they had become more closed-mouthed with excuses that rele release of some of their information is too sensitive due to defense initiatives. Yeah. So now it seems many strange explosions occurring since our military changed their protocol are being explained away by media using unreasonable excuses. What is being kept from us? You can bet a lot more than just some simple military exercises. When Comet Hale-Bopp arrived in 1997, 
It brought a brilliant nightly display, not witnessed by comet enthusiasts for centuries. That was a stormy night. I'm not sure, honey. I think this is the comet. Some people believe this was a sign of Yahusha's return. And one cult committed suicide, hoping to be transported to this comet upon their deaths. Such extreme measures by this cult caused religion, caused religion a bad rap and preachers to steer away from the subject of a coming apocalypse. <laughs> Which is just what Satan wants. Eleven years later, asteroid 2007 TU-24 came the closest ob became the closest object near Earth in over 2,000 years when it, when it traveled by on January 29, 2008. NASA knows full well there are serious changes going on in our universe, and they are preparing. Recently, it was discovered that they are moving their various offices to different locations around the country. Even NASA's new Near-Earth Object Observation Program, called Space Guard, is watching for objects that might become hazardous to our planet, because they know sooner or later Earth will encounter a direct According to astronomers, Earth is presently going through the Milky Way galaxy's dense central plane where large comets and or fragments of comets may have collided with Earth in ancient times. Evidence exists on Earth it has been bombarded by asteroids in our past. Meteor Crater in Arizona was the first crater to be identified as an impact crater. Between 20,000 to 50,000 years ago, a small asteroid about 80 feet in diameter impacted Earth, forming that crater. Calculations show the Earth cycles through a dense plane like it is traveling through right now about even 30 million years about every 30 million years. It is uh, if so, it has been a long time since Earth was cruising along where we presently are. Okay. Temple Tuttle Comet passed Earth every th uh, 33 years with its spectacular dust trail. Always, always causes concern due to extensive damage it, it could co possibly do to our increasing number of satellites. <clears throat> as far back as November 1998, Leonid meteorite showers composed of fragments from Temple Tuttle Comet, have forced NASA to turn its Hubble telescope away for fear oncoming fragments would cause damage. The 1998 event was followed by even more concerns in November 1999, when Earth went, went through many fragments of the comet's dust trail. Ten years later, in November 2009, Earth passed through meteors left behind mainly from Temple Tuttle's 1466 and 1533 orbits around Earth. Each year since, NASA has realized ever-present dangers to its space station and satellites regarding potential destruction from growing numbers of near-Earth objects. This is a real threat always lurking around every bend, and Temple Tuttle is just one of many comets dust trails that could devastate our planet. On July 4th, 2005, NASA's space probe Deep Impact <clears throat> violently struck Comet Temple 1 to analyze dust and ice samples. The Na uh, NASA's Stardust spacecraft, which was sent into orbit, orbit earlier on February 7th, 1999, to retrieve comet samples and interstellar dust from Comet Wild 1 and 2 as well as an asteroid named Anne Frank, also reviewed changes to Comet Temple 1 on February 14, 2011, from the collision it, it encountered with deep impact in 2005. Then on October 24, 2007, a very strange anomaly happened in the heavens from comets, Comet 17P Holmes exploded and sent debris into space. When felt this explosion was a sign of serious changes in the heavens and a start of coming disasters foretold by ancients. The highest point in the Orion constellation's upward cycle occurred in AD 2000. Many speculate this constellation was targeted by pyramid builders to geometrically align their pyramid to match the heavens or the Shamayim. The lowest point of Orion's cycle occurred during the 11th millennium BC 
When history reveals Earth's greatest geological up upheavals are believed to have occurred, signs in the in the Shamayim throughout mankind's history have been noted as harbingers of enlightenment, as well as foretelling disaster. Secret societies have taught higher initiates over the years that a secret of the ages will be unearthed from a hall of records located near Egypt's pyramids. Even the sleeping prophet Edgar Cayce, without reservation, predicted a huge library existed under the Sphinx front paws. These ancient records are touted to become the grandest discovery of all time that will totally explain mankind's origins, but the fact they are serpent lineage records will be, keep hit, will be kept hidden. So humanity accepts them as truth. Ground sensing satellites have indicated there are, in fact, chambers below the Sphinx paws. Each time a discovery is made in Egypt, information is not forthcoming, as if someone is secretly keeping things hidden from the general public until a scheduled time of release. Those ancient artifacts are heavily guarded by police and military personnel, and will continue to be until it is time for commoners to be exposed to them. Those controlling Google Earth and Microsoft Telescope indicate someone knows what is about to befall mankind. Ancient hieroglyphics in Egypt and ancient Sumer suggest a future return of a specific star that will impact Earth at the end of the age. It has been speculated this is why Google Earth and Microsoft's Telescope have both blackened out an area in their panoramic sky photos near Orion's constellation at coordinates of 5 hours and 53 minutes, 27 seconds, minus 6, 10 by 58, suggest to many they are hiding something. Yes, whether intentional or not, there is indeed a star headed our way, which the book of Revelation calls Wormwood. Satan and his army will do everything in their power to keep... Yeah, it's like the book. <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah, sorry. it's okay, babe. I'm, I'm so tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> Satan and his army will do everything in their power to keep this nemesis hidden from public knowledge as long as possible. Because when it can be seen by the naked eye, it, it will be too late. The question is not if there is something out there, but when will it arrive? Everything happening seems to be based on an agenda using various forms of deception. Remember the Y2K problem had potential for disaster across our entire globe if computers had, had all failed at the same time? Was this Y2K bug really an unforeseen problem designers honestly failed to detect or a deliberate scam to force us into a web where the grid of surveillance would establish control and it form a prison down. for all humanity under a new world order. That's why we have, that's why they have facial recognition stuff. Shut, so what happened? All they were shut down, right? Uh, I think so because they didn't have 2,000, they didn't have zero zero programmed in the computer. It didn't crash, but it, um, it, something happened, like everything, not everything at once shut down. But they said their computers crazy. weren't ready for 2000, year 2000. Yeah. yeah. I read that in an earlier chapter. <laughs> From that Y2K threat of collapse, mankind began a downward spiral into a world of total surveillance at every known angle. In 2010, our congressional leaders actually passed legislation that mandated putting microchips in all humans for universal health care coverage. Just over 11 years earlier in 2000, most Americans thought a tracking device on our computers was cause for concern. Now they are mandating, mandating it for our body. Is anybody paying attention? And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And there, then that no man might buy sell, or sell, save he had the mark. Revelation 13, 16 through 17. During January 2000, signs of serious atmospheric changes began when our sun started releasing massive solar flares producing solar storms that crashed into Earth's magnetic field with increased intensity, 
On April 11, 2003, the largest solar flare ever recorded went off the established scale of solar flare measurements with an X28 plus burst. Solar storms have continued, can, continued to intensify by unleashing greater numbers of solar flares, larger than we have ever witnessed in our sun's history. Their increased occurrences and magnitude are directly affecting everything on planet Earth, including our biological processes and, more importantly, our DNA. Each solar storm involves a twisting, whirling mass of electrified gases that directly affects Earth, Earth's magnetic grid, all electrical components, as well as all life forms. Radio waves become increasingly disoriented by solar storms. When these storms fill Earth's upper atmosphere with electricity, they ignite a magnificent display known as Aurora Borealis Northern Lights and Aurora, Aurora Australis Southern Lights. These auroras became extremely intense in early 2012 and continued to escalate, prompting NASA to fire a rocket directly into them in order to better understand what was happening. During, much major, or during such major storms, sorry, radio communication can shut down because sound waves become distorted and totally interrupted. When this occurs, radio communication or anything else using wave technology on Earth has potential to become blacked out completely, including telegraph circuits, computers, and satellite systems. If a, ser if a serious storm ever occurred, it would have a devastating influence on all communications worldwide. Even growth rate of trees, average annual temperatures, plus rainfall are all directed are directly affected by solar flares. The, the worse a magnetic storm becomes, the more damaging it is to Earth's magnetic field. It is a force to be reckoned with, and it is something totally out of mankind's control. On April 5, 2010, a space weather advisory was broadcast by U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administrative Administration Space Weather Prediction Center, NOAA. Warning space shuttle astronauts and the International Space Station to move to shielded compartments of the most powerful magnetic storm since December 2006 was about to hit, to hit them. NASA's SOHO spacecraft has logged a huge coron coronal mass ejection two days earlier on April 3, 2010, registering a 7 on the KP Geomagnetic Index. Our sun seems to be following another sun's changes in the universe. Two years earlier, on April 25, 2008, NASA's SWIFT satellite recorded the largest flare from a red dwarf star called E.V. Lacerte, which had a power of thousands of our sun's flares all bundled into one. Um, during the summer of 2010, the brightest gamma ray burst ever recorded blinded NASA's SWIFT X-ray. A telescope XRT with with this X-ray eye that was actually invented to study these sunbursts. It literally could not handle the magnitude of such energy being generated in our outer space. NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope had earlier witnessed the brightest gamma ray burst on record, September 15, 2009. Then on March 28, 2011, CBS reported astronomers were stumped by a mysterious cosmic blast and could not understand not how such a huge, powerful star had exploded. Nowhere in past records had astronomers seen such a bright, long-lasting series of explosions, mimicking what? a gamma-ray burst. Gamma-ray flares oh. do not last long. This burst went way beyond anything ever witnessed in magnitude. It was located in the far northern constellation called Draco and believed to be a star that came too close to its galaxy's center, and was torn apart by that center's black hole. Draco is Latin for dragon. Back in November 20, or 2005, researchers from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center claimed Draco contained stars that originated at the very beginning of time. According to the journal Nature, these, these researchers reported, reported collective light they witnessed and still traveling is still traveling across our universe, even through the first even though the first objects disappeared long ago. Could the huge burst of light astronomers saw on March 28, 2011, 
be the moment uh, Satan fell from Shamayim, from heaven, at the very beginning of time, just as the scripture records. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven, Shamayim. Luke 10, 18. How art thou fallen from heaven, or Shamayim, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into Shamayim, heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yahuwah. I will sit also upon the mount of congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, Sheol, to the sides of the sides of the pit. Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. Okay, that's the end of this section. Next time we will be reading Earth Rocks and Everything Rolls. Um, that one is that one is pretty long itself, but um, after that we will be reading about the mysterious bird, fish, and animal deaths. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. Um, I'm gonna get a drink real quick. Um, because I am very tired. My husband got home late from work. And, um, he had to go and wash his work clothes. Because he, he had to pre-close and close. So his clothes were very dirty. He's been having to wash them every day. So I just told him we should just get one of those little portable washing machine things. That you can just pull the plug and And you just plug it in and it works. So you can plug it into a, re a regular outlet. They sell them on time you. But. They're only 30 bucks, so where can we go wrong? <laughs> like, I don't think we can go wrong with that. All we need to wash is, is his work hat, his work pants, and work shirt. That's it. Each night. Because it's just, it's getting ridiculous him having to go and pay, pay money to the laundry, not to do the laundry. Especially when I have a washer and dryer at the house. Mm. I apologize, baby. No, it's all right, but I I know, I know. I'm almost done. And now it's time to praise Yahuwah. Tola Rabba Abba Yahuwah Tola Rabba Abba Yahuwah Hallelujah Hallelujah <clears throat> Yahuwah is with me. Yahuwah is for me. Yahuwah is greater than all of these things. If Allahim is for me, then who can be against me? I love you all with an everlasting love, as our Abba Yahuwah and the Shamayim loves each and every one of us. Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth.